and we need future farmers. And so this is where we start, this is the ground level. I'm uh, Andrew Ether and I run the farm component of the Farrow High School here in Kalala at Tamworth. This part of the school is important to me because it, it's part of the future of ag to try and bring new infrastructure, bring new and exciting technology to the school. So what we're looking at at the moment is a 60 kilowatt single axis tracking solar system that's been elevated and engineered in a way to uh, not only be co-located with stock and farming equipment but to also help uh, use clean energy to power the irrigation systems here. So uh, converting Farah from a diesel powered irrigation system to now using clean electricity to, to run significant watering infrastructure. The original irrigation system here was pretty much a flawed system when I arrived. It was quite old and it was very dated quite small, not, not very efficient because of that size. It was reliant quite heavily on a diesel component, uh, which then brought a very high maintenance level. In the past, we've had machines that have overheated in the summer and you're coming out and starting them late at night to try and get them running in the cool. And, you know, that's no fun in that. They call that irritation, not irrigation. This is our existing um, irrigation system as it stood before our um, installation of our solar project. The uh, temperature of the day influences the fuel usage and all these sorts of things. There's all the other components of coming to check fuels, oils and diesels. Air filters need blowing out. We need to change oils every 300 hours. It's just a, um, another aspect of our job that we're looking for something different. So in our journey of looking for a, a, a new avenue to fix some of our irrigation issues and some of our energy costs. We, we came across a project with a, a pilot scheme and um, it was something that fit, fitted the mould for us. We saw that there was a New South Wales DPI grant for, for technology like this in supporting farms. The benefit of this system is that it attracts the sun so it, it creates 25% more energy daily than, than just a rooftop mounted system and it uh, delivers a, a cleaner and a smoother power source all through the day. So uh, the size of the system is designed to support all of the irrigation systems going here at Farrah. This is part of our um, new pump setup. So a new 33 kilowatt um, engine yep. driving our centre pivot which is up on top of the hill there, yep. so we can run the pivot and a travelling irrigator. With that much volume of, With of that motor. Much, yeah. yep. Whereas prior to that we only had enough power to run a very small enterprise and then we had to modify that to a diesel. So this is where we've been able to take our diesel away yep. and replace it with our power yep. and then we were able to control everything with our phone and that's this ag sense here. Yeah, right. So this basically is able to start and stop we can control the speed of the irrigator, how much water it we put on. So from this area, we're able to start this pump from here and I could be here or I could be sitting on the beach and we can control just about any aspect of it. When it came to doing something like this, this was important that we could not lose paddock space. And that's very critical for us. We maybe seem large for a school, but as a farm, we're quite small. A normal solar type project didn't fit the need we're able to still make use of the paddock. We've got a permanent pasture established. We're able to irrigate, we're able to fertilise, do everything that we require, and we haven't lost any of the paddock space. You know, there wasn't the land of just fence away a, a restricted system where, you know, the, the stock were fenced out of. And so what we wanted to do was, was build a solar system that made sure it could integrate with the, the cattle and the, and the sheep stock here and the, and the farming equipment. So one of the added bonuses for us, Ben, has been the, the reverse feeding of this fella here. Yep. So we're able to pick up the power that generally used to come down out of the school is now coming from our new transformer and we've been able to pick up our workshop, our uh, lunch rooms, office, all that sort of thing. So air cons that are running daily, yep. um, so that's a free ride out of the solar system. The low voltage power poles that access um, the workshop and, the, and my office and, and a few other sites, we're able to power from them. So we've been able to remove those from the site. So we don't have ongoing maintenance of those. Another part of the bonus is by having a metering system here, we don't have to have anyone go onto the floodplains, yeah. so we don't actually have to have anyone come on site. That's a, that's a great little added bonus. It is an added bonus, because we don't get contaminated soils, weeds, all that sort of stuff, and that's important to us with our statuses for both our studs. 
just those logistics, you know, you've got a fuel truck booked for Monday and you have 20 mils of rain on yeah. Sunday night, suddenly we've got to cancel the truck and yeah. say, look, we can't make access yeah. or deliver it to our main tank and we ferry it down in small loads or things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, we're also driving across our best country on the, on the, on the site. Yes. Um, it's compaction, there's all yeah. those other things that come with that. I've been really surprised at just how amazing uh, this system has achieved payback results. Where we originally predicted a, a payback period of 5.3 years, uh, I would say now with the fuel price, I think we're sitting somewhere around the three year mark, meaning that we've got an effective return on investment of, of 33%. That's almost unheard of. It'll be interesting to see the full benefits of that because we've been in a solid three weeks of non-stop irrigation. And I know in the past, uh, that probably would have equated to probably an 8,000 litre diesel bill and at two bucks a litre we, all, we all, all can do the math so and I'm pretty certain our power bill won't be anywhere near that. There's a number of finance options available for farmers and agribusinesses looking to invest in this type of technology. There's green loans and efficiency loans out there. Some of them are driven by the federal and state governments. Um, others are just done by private organisations. There are some also some other unique products offered by private companies, uh, what known as PPAs, or Power Purchase Agreements. So the agribusiness or the farmer doesn't have to come up with the capital up front to build and install the system. That is done by another private firm and then there might be a, you know, a 10 or a 15 year agreement where you agree to buy that power back at a substantially reduced volume in terms of money. So it, it can create significant savings from the get-go in, in that power purchase arrangement. Not everyone wants to be the guinea pig, to be the first one up. And it's quite exciting in a way to, to, to lead the way and go, well, look, this is, this is potentially the, the new future. At a smaller scale, farmers can, can you know, invest in their own energy independence by installing these sorts of systems on their own farms and you know, electrifying their systems so that their you know, fuel, they're not having to you know, rely on the fluctuations of the diesel and the oil price. Um, the only, only issues they're worrying about is how cloudy the day is and how much power they're going to make. Um, that's, that's energy independence for you.